What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. You can see I'm freaking excited right now because you, you know, we, you already read it in the description. That's why you're here, that's why you're checking in. We're getting in the box, we're talking about frog fishing from the bank, a deep dive into what it is, what you need to do, and how you need to be doing it. So we're in this box and we're talking ultimate frog fishing from the bank. We're diving in the box, talking about what frogs you need to be throwing, some modifications you can do, the gear you should be throwing, and then finally we're gonna wrap it up with colors. But frog fishing from the bank, guys, if you're a beginner here, this is the video for you. If you guys are wanting to get in depth, just go crazy about your baits down that rabbit hole, this is the video for you. But if you are looking just to throw a couple frogs, this might not be the video because I'm going to be diving in trying to tell you guys what to do from the bank. But for you guys that just kind of want to hear about a few frogs, I'll talk about a few frogs that you need to be throwing. I'll give you just three recommendations to throw right now and then you can be done. One, Jackal Gavacho. Look it up. It's got a round bend hook. It's got a cupped face, but you need to be throwing it. Number two, Booyah Pad Crasher. Uh, standard face. It is a very effective bait. It is very cheap. It is very light. It works, walks very well, and there's a lot of colors. So, yeah, Booyah Pad Crasher. And then finally, think about some sort of moving frog, just because you need to get your feet wet uh, with a lot of different baits. So, Tackle Sprinker, it's just a straight prop frog. You're going to be excited because you probably already throw that River Sea Whopper Plopper or that Berkeley Chapo. Uh, this is going to resemble that same type of action. And it's, it's just a lot of fun. And that's why I'm recommending it, guys. These produce some crazy bluffs. It's just a freaking blast. So, yeah, Tackle Sprinker. Or take a look at uh, their Maraca. There's a lot of different styles uh, the Sprinker has for retrieve baits. So, if you don't like this one, consider that. But that's it, three baits for you guys to try uh, to get out in the water. But for you guys that wanna dive in, let's dive in. We're talking about what type of frogs you should be throwing, what to do, and when to do it. So first up, let's talk about what types of frogs you got. You got typical hollow belly frogs, like I was showing you, standard face, they come in all different sizes, they walk very well, they're decent in cover, they're decent in the mats, and they're decent in open water. So if you just want an all-around do-it-all frog, uh, consider just a standard hollow belly frog. Easy to find. Find your favorite brand. Take a look at that booyah if you want to play uh, and you haven't played before. <clears throat> but even more of the hollow belly, there's different modifications or styles. Here's a poppin' looking frog. It's got a cupped face. It's uh, gonna produce a little bit more splash for you, a little more bubble. But it's not gonna be as effective over the mats uh, because it's just not as heavy not as wide and it's not going to get down and push that stuff around so if you're in the mats if you're in the junk if you're in that beefy beef that nasty stuff i mean i don't even know why some guys are throwing that stuff because it's just a headache but if you're a tournament guy and you think that nine pounder is sitting under that three inch mat take a look at your mat frogs uh, ish monroe has this giant fat daddy mat frog i don't even know it's it's a giant gumbo frog so if you want something like that look at that uh check that one out but consider a scum frog it's they're not they're not very expensive there's a lot of different styles this is their trophy series it's pretty pump i actually won these on an instagram giveaway like a hundred like 150 dollars worth of these frogs by just commenting down below i know you guys have done that just comment down below wishing hoping maybe i'll win i actually won so if you're not doing that, just throw your name into the hat once in a while because you can only lose. And half of this time, the same guys are doing them, so you already follow them. All right, so Scum Frog. It's got a really unique weight system on the bottom here. You can see it actually sits in the water like this, and it, that's really nice for the mat, you can see. So it's going to sit down in it. Imagine this being the mat. It's going to be sitting down kind of in it and then pushing through that stuff which is gonna create that trail for that fe if those fish to hone in on and just to absolutely massacre this thing. 
but with that being said the way this thing sits makes it ideal for the mats but not your optimal choice for around the mats or in the open water just because they're it's not as effective to walk you can walk them i found if you trim the legs really really short it, it walks a little bit better but for you guys who are just learning it just know that you might have a tendency to make it bob like this but maybe speed up your cadence or maybe slow down and maybe you're overworking it but the biggest thing for me was to trim the legs ultra short even shorter than this depending on which size of frog but an alternative to that think about this gabbit this big gabbit it's not a, not a cheap bait and it's not it's it's a really soft frog it's really cool but it's not as durable as some of these frogs and that's because this stuff gets all chewed up Oh, I didn't bring that rod, but just I'll snip in a pick. The this thing is absolutely scorched on one of my rods. So yeah, big gabbit, but it's got a catamaran face, so it's kind of got that cup. You can use this. This is one of those frogs that you can throw outside of the cover and in the cover, both pretty effectively. But with the weight, sits down into the cover pretty well, and it it, it moves a ton of water and it spits a ton of water based on that design. But considering that, I mean, this thing has some giant hooks. Look how far or how long that is to the bend of the hook. That is insane. When you pin those fish, guys, they're not coming off. But if you don't get a solid hook set in them and you're dragging them through the mats, that's where you got to be. You got to be careful with something like this. Give this frog a second. When feel the, feel the weight on this, and then you'll pin them in the top of the mouth every single time it's you when you feel that oh, that beefy hook set it's pfft, insane insane just a ton of fun all right last uh kind of showed you a little we're gonna be talking about retrieve frogs and that's like this lunker hunt prop frog you can see you're gonna run it kind of like a spinner bait or crank bait just retrieve cast and retrieve and then these feet are gonna kick uh, they have a similar one called a prop fish. It's like a fish on the back or a fish tail, and that tail is a twirling. I prefer this one, but that's like the same concept. So if you want to try that, give it a go. I heard it's pretty good, but just consider it as, or think about it as a frog or the concept of a frog, even though it's a fish. I mean, because when you're fishing a frog, guys, just there. Some of the times, these the fish aren't even thinking it's a frog. It's this could be a bluegill up there moving around or i mean we even got rats that you can slide in and it's doing the same thing it's they're looking at it as some some food on the top of the surface a baby duck maybe it is a baby frog but most of the time that i'd, I'd say it's they're they're thinking it's a fish that's dying or like i like to think about when i throw throw it like a big a big hawk just drop this bait perfectly above this large mouth's head and it's like oh what are the chances that this meal is here? And then bam, you got yourself a six pounder because you just fried that fish. But jumping back into it, this retrieve frog is gonna be cash. My dad absolutely loves this thing. I don't know what it is, but he's in love with this thing. This thing gets it for him. Not gonna be the best in the mass because you can see it's got a trailer hook or a stinger hook here. If you guys aren't, uh, hooking up with fish. I don't typically do it, but that is an option to throw yourself a stinger hook on. They come in like single packs or two packs or not not that cheap, but you just slide them on the double hooks there. And then you got your trailer hook. You can do that with uh, this style of frog too, but it's definitely been most effective on this. And this comes pre-rigged with one, so that's cool if you want to just do that. And then again, the Teckle Sprinker or the Maracker or all these other different styles that they have that are pretty pretty sick and you're just going to straight retrieve it again it's going to do that whopper plopper action and this thing gets bites guys i've watched videos i've got some pretty thick bites when they smack this thing it's a hard hit they don't just little they they they, they want that thing when they're coming for it so those are the couple different frog types that you're going to be throwing from the bank and when it comes to the sizes of frogs i mean you can see these this river to sea uh what is this thing's name i don't even know not the spitting wall the bully wall yeah that's the bully wall this is the big one i've got the tiny one when it comes to your sizes i'd say if you're just jumping into it pick a standard size frog and i mean what what's standard i mean this booyah is kind of standard it's i don't know 
two, a little over two inches, maybe, or two inches. Not these giant, don't try a big one. I mean, if you if you just have the heavy gear and you just want to go big, heavy frog setting, go for it. But that's 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 where I think the fishing industry kind of skewed frogs for at, at least the bank guy. I mean, frogs are becoming huge now. Everyone loves the frogs. But for a while, the bank guy was not into the frog just because it's it was like you needed an extra heavy rod, you needed a giant frog, and just expect, giant blow-ups and nothing else but that's not the case i've the frog is probably been the most productive bait for me start to finish year round i'd say just because you can throw it up anywhere it's most one of the most weedless baits on the market guys you can throw it in the wood you can throw it up on the bank and drag it back in you half the time you can throw it into a bush and just kind of pull it out and now it's right up under the bush so yeah most productive but again just get yourself a standard size frog it doesn't need to be huge um, and then go with a frog don't start out with like a I don't know I was about to say a squirrel this is a little mouse standard size frog the scum like the the smaller one or the, I mean the bigger ones pretty normal size too but again just normal size standard size frog between a half ounce three quarter ounce and you're you're looking good all right so moving on modifications you can do to these things and the number one thing I'd say to do is trim your legs on some of these frogs this booyah out of the pack is really long and that's cool that they give you long ones so you can get options of where you want to go but sometimes if you want a good rule of judgment don't have your legs being at least longer than the length of the bait so you can just wrap it over and see Ow, I just hooked myself see these it's sharp guys even hooks people dang so you can just snip that off there. But I actually like to go a little bit shorter. So just kind of get, get them all there. Straighten them all up. Get them off the hook. Pull them down. And grab yourself a pair of blade, uh, braid scissors or some really nice scissors. Uh, and get to get to work. So I'd say if you haven't done this before, just cut, cut long. You can always cut more. Cut long. Just come straight through. As straight as possible, uh, but you don't have to be straight. I actually, like, kind of like feather it around just because it looks a little more, a little more lively, like it's been snipped at before. But and then you trim your legs down, so it's just a little more usable, a little easier to walk. And this could s still, to be some guys, considered way too long. I mean, I've got some, like I said, on the where'd he go? This guy's is really short. I mean, sometimes they're that short. I mean, it all depends on what you do, but trim the legs up depending on your length shorter it's going to walk better uh longer I, I just like a little bit longer a little bit more presence but uh too long like this river to see and you're just going to really hurt you're going to hurt your hookup ratio because they're going to be swiping at the back or it's going to be hard to work because there's going to be a lot of stuff for you to pull around in there and it's just not going to be that effective number two on mods would be say let's take this you can see how the hooks on this bait are kind of down and in. I mean, now it's cool. The, the beauty of this big gabbit is there's recesses in here. So when they do hit it, and the fact that it's really soft, that it really exposes those hooks really quick. But what you can do is if you're not having a good hookup ratio, and sorry guys, I say this bro just does not have a good hookup ratio for me. Just because it's kind of tough. And yeah, it's just tough. And these EW, EWGs are pointed into the bait. But you know what I'm going to say, grab some pliers, uh, be careful not to crush this barb in here and just grab it and pull it up and kind of pull it up and away from the bait. The tackle is a good example how it's kind of away from the bait, up and away. Rather than down in. Now do that to your preference because the more you do it, obviously the more you're going to be snagged up. So I don't do it that much just because I just I haven't I, I kind of move away from the frog that I feel like I need to like the spro I mean I throw spro I like them but it's definitely a secondary or even a third to say this gavacho with this round bend hook this is my all-time favorite frog it walks well it, it, the best on the market I would say it's not too expensive and it's it casts like a dream it looks like a it's like a bullet but not the best map frog but it does get smacked so turn up those hooks if you need, grab that, pull it up, but be careful about the barb and you should really help those hook sets. 
A third mod would be, I don't have any here, but you can see most baits, or all of them I'd say, have some sort of hole or gap in the bottom, the tackle, the, everyone's different. This river to sea has some sort of cone. I don't know if you can get anything in there, but if you want to get some more weight out of your frog, throw some split shots in it, like a bobber split shot. Yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty awesome, and you can get a half ass rattle out of it. If you want even more rattle, throw some beads in there. I mean, you gotta get some tiny beads. I wanna rip holes in your bait. But you can throw some beads in there, throw some split shots, get some more weight, or get some more sound out of that thing. That's It's really cool, and a lot of guys a lot of guys do it. It's, it's a pretty cool concept. I thought that was cool when I uh, learned about that. But again, don't be careful about ripping your bait or bring some mend it and sew that thing back up like a true surgeon. All right, what else is there in terms of modifications? Hmm, oh yeah. Like I said, on this Spro. I don't wanna single out your Spros. There's other brands. Sorry guys, I can't think of any right now. I don't even know if this is a Spro. I don't know, this frog. I think it's, it's <laughs> I think it's a Spro. They're kinda, they're kinda hard. Um, not the best, some guy, I mean, it's, 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 what's hard to you, I mean, it's like just super soft and it's a little tougher but boil up some water in a pan or a pot and kind of start dipping this in don't dip your hands in but dip it in for a second kind of swoosh it around pull it up dip it in and then this is going to soften up and that's a beauty option for you to do so you put it in again and let it soften up and then put it out put it out to the side to dry and then it's going to harden back up and then you keep doing that over and over wet it heat it up dry it wet it heat it up dry it and then that will get it to the desired squishiness that you need on the water that is a cool option and it's very easy to do and it's pretty fast and it's worked it's worked a lot on this bait i did that with this one this is a freaking awesome bait and I, I went ahead and did that. It was pretty cool. Next, the gear. We're throwing it on. Let's move this over. One, I'm gonna start it out. Bank guys, if you watched any of my other videos, you've seen this before. It's, pay no mention to the bait. It's like, I mean, it's the most versatile bait I think in my lineup. So that's why it's got this big underspin. I was in some clear water yesterday. It was, it was a ton, ton of fun, but a medium heavy seven foot to seven foot two casting rod is where you need to be. I like this Zodius. I got it with a Cronarch MGL. You absolutely don't need something this expensive. I mean, it's not that expensive, it's kind of mid range, but it's been a lot of fun. The Zodius is the most versatile rod in my lineup. I, I've throw, I mean, I have a lot of different rods and this, this rod is sensitive enough where I can throw the jig and it's got an eye of power that I can throw that frog easy. So this 7.2 Zodius is awesome. Medium heavy rod. I know you guys are thinking heavy rod, but from the bank, it, it, I'll say for you guys that don't have a lot of cover over your head and you're fishing from the bank, lot, not a lot of tree, so you have a lot of room for that hook set, yeah, maybe a heavy action rod is most is a better suit for you. But for the guys that, I mean, they got brush around, there's often trees, you, you can't really hook set like a boss but you gotta be a boss anyway, medium heavy rod is what you need to do. I mean, you're going straight braid, 40 to 50 pound braid, I'd say is all you need, straight braid, and like the, most of your frogs are gonna get done. Now this big gabbit, I tend to throw this on the heavy, but that booyah, if you're gonna start out with it, if you're gonna throw this little rat looking thing, I mean, this, I mean, have some fun out there, guys. It's, why not? Medium heavy fast is what you're gonna do and your reel is going to be fast you need to catch up with that fish you need to reel down on them and set the hook quick so a fast gear ratio seven seven to one or a little bit higher you don't need an eight eight or higher that's too much seven to one is becoming like the norm like i mean what do you what do you what are you flipping on seven to one what are you cranking on bro seven to one. Oh, what are you deep cranking on Psh, seven to one what that's that's just conversations i'm hearing these days Medium heavy, fast, get it done. It's easier to hook these fish and it's get that get down to the backbone. I mean, like I said, the, the foliage above your head is just a little too much for a heavy, heavy action rod all the time. So yeah, straight up, you probably already have it if you're throwing spinner baits, if you're throwing chatter baits, uh, you probably already have it. 
next we've got your heavy and it's a, this is a seven seven six heavy uh, you can go down seven four you're a little shorter but for those bigger frogs I got that gabbit on here if you're gonna go with like I, I mentioned that that ish big fat daddy frog I don't recommend that being your first ever frog but if you're gonna go that route you might even need an extra heavy so that's why and you, you need to you need to think about what you're doing if you're gonna try to be the most versatile out there you need to get a rod that's gonna be able to do that job for most of your baits but if you're just gonna specialize in that big thick stuff that you could also flip in yeah extra heavy is the way to go but a medium heavy is your primary and then your heavy your heavy is your secondary or go with the heavy if you feel a little bit more comfortable with it i've got this big gabbit on here i've got 50 pound braid it's like i said 40 or 50 pound braids nice slings it very well i've wanted this i went up the 65 but it's just kind of it's just too much to work around the bank uh, I, it's, it's just this is not not the best for those applications but I mean, all this stuff is going to work in the boat, and uh, I've caught plenty of fish out of the boat. I mean, it's a determinate fish too. I mean, just because you're a bank guy doesn't mean you don't get in the boat. Again, medium heavy, heavy. You are all set to work those baits. Now, last but not least, colors are king with frogs, or are they? Where are you at in the country, guys? It depends on what kind of bait fish your fish are honing in on. I've got a lot of gill here in Michigan, so I'm obviously sticking around more of a gill pattern. But I'd say even though I'm sticking this around this this realm, my primary is definitely some sort of white bottom. That's key. The bottom. I mean, you, you can. I mean, this is cool and all. I mean, this this one is a freak. I think this is like exotic frog or leopard frog. I don't know, crazy frog. But it's got all this craziness here. And I mean, when it's walking, it does have a little bit of roll and dip. But I mean, the back of your frog is the least, it, it's, it catches more, it catches the angler rather than the fish. So the bottom of your frog is where you need to spend the most, most of your time thinking of what color. So well, no matter what it is, some sort of white presence, some sort of black or dark, some sort of boldy pattern. Here's a good example, and uh, some sort of gill or clear. These kind of go hand in hand. It's it's nice. So white, black, gill, clear, depending on where you at, and you don't need them all. So I'd say start out with a black and a white, black bottom, white bottom. It's gonna be nice. And then uh, chartreuse is always a great option. I mean, here you're gonna hear that all the time. Black, white, chartreuse, but I, I throw a little more gill. Than some of these guys talk about and it's it's been super effective so don't don't knock the gill and because it brings you ultra thrills what else can we talk about guys I, I think that's it i think we covered it we covered the ballpark what types you got what type of mods some rods and gear to throw it on and uh what colors so i hope that helps you guys this video was a lot of fun a lot of different frogs it's been a lot of fun year with these things. Got some pretty crazy ones. Yeah, this this Buster K. We can talk about that in in the future. There, that's a crazy frog. It even has comes with a rattle. That. Yeah. yeah. So if you guys who stuck it out at the end, consider you got a little little bonus. That Buster K. Yeah, this is a sex sexy one. I think this is called Shooting Star. This bait caught me, but it was pretty sweet to catch it. Like the video, guys. If this helped you, drop a comment down below. What frogs you're gonna be throwing? And when you're going to be throwing them, because you can throw these things year round. I mean, spring, go with the lighter frog, the smaller frogs. Summer, step it up to the standard frog. And then kind of in the fall, step it back down to the standard or move it down to the smaller frogs. You can throw frogs year round. Some of these guys wait too long to get onto them. And I've, I've caught fish. I've caught frog fish in what people would think would be still winter weather in Michigan this year. It's, I mean, you're, on, you're in your hat. You have your ears covered and you're in muffs. And I've caught frog fish. Like the video, guys. I hope that helped you. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a good one.